the original bait builders. A lot of that was done by hand with a, whether it's a pocket knife or a razor knife. That as well is gonna affect how much action the bait has. I'm gonna say it sinks. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm going with. I'm gonna go that it sinks. I was very wrong. And it actually jumps back up quite fast to be quite honest. Boy, that's pretty close there now. That's a pretty running little dude. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are here and uh, going through building a crankbait. This is part two. If you've not seen part one yet, uh, back up and watch that. And that really shows you how to get to this point right here where we've got a blank. We've got a body shaped out how we want it. We've got it sanded down. We've got it routered. We've got us a bait to start with. Okay, we've got our base. So now in this part, part two, what we're gonna go through is really the beginning of, uh, of you know, putting your bill slot in, drilling your belly weights, putting your, your nose and tail wire, you know, exactly where to put those. This is gonna be kind of the, I'm gonna call it the construction part of the crankbait. The final part, part three, is gonna really be on the assembly, um, you know, and actually putting everything together and make sure that that all goes right. But this part two, yeah, definitely on the construction side of the bait. This to me is probably the step that we're about to do, I would have to say is the single most important step in making a crankbait run, okay? If you do this next step wrong, nothing else that you, that you do is gonna matter, whether the bait floats or sinks, whether your, your, your tail wire is in a good place or not, um, none of the rest of it's gonna matter. The bill angle and the depth in which you set that bill that is probably the single most important part of a crankbait. Um, you know, not only to get the desired action, but to get any action whatsoever. The line tie is, is really, really crucial, but the bill angle, I can't stress enough just how important that is. Um, a lot of different, you can put the same bait, a lot of different bills in it at the same angle and even get different depths, get different actions, you know, get different factors as far as how well it's gonna come through cover. Um, you know, taking a, a bill that was, say this exact bill, being round like it is, if you cut it off and made it square and then just smooth the corners over, that's probably gonna come through cover slightly better than this round bill will. You would probably lose a little bit of depth. Um, you might have a little bit harder thump with a square bill than you will this round bill. So just small, small factors like that um, that really determine a lot. And then what we're about to do is actually cut the bill slot in this bait but then how deep that that bill sits in there. You know, this one has actually got a little groove cut out so that the nose wire can run through that internally inside the bait. But, so I've got to bury it at least that deep, but if I go just that deep, or if I really sink it to where I've got just a little bit of that bill sticking out, that as well is gonna affect how much action the bait has and just how deep that bait goes. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of factors as to what you're gonna accomplish by setting that bill in there at the right angle, um, for the particular bait just based on what you're wanting it to do. And something that makes this, you know, to make it really uniform, this is just a jig that I've made um, that fits, you know, this particular bait well. This one is, is kind of a uniform one. It, it's something that I can put a few different bodies in, uh, but it, it does have a really good angle for this bait, um, you know, to fit in there and, and to work with. So this, that jig, it does, it makes it really handy. I can just fly through these baits. I can cut those bill slots really quick and uh, you know, be able to make that bait uniform for one, make them several of them similar, but, uh, but know that it's gonna be something that's gonna run. All right, goggles on, ear protection on after that. This is uh, Ott Defoe, the crankbait guy. So we're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut this slot. I'm gonna cut it in there a little ways and then I'm gonna pull it back out and uh, actually check the depth with that bill that I've got to see if it's where I want. If not, I'll go just a little bit deeper until I get it kind of Kind of the way I just like the way it looks. So what I had cut there the first time was not quite as deep as I would have liked for it to be in. So I just went back, took just a smidge more out of it 
And now I've got a bill slot in there that I really like the angle of, I like the depth of. Um, I think that will be something that will give us a bait that'll have a pretty good action to it. So now next step, we're gonna move over to the drill press. We're gonna drill the tail wire, the nose wire, and the belly weight. We'll do the two wires first, and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up with that belly weight. No reason, any particular order there, um, one over the other, before the other, it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, we're gonna move over there, drill those holes, and then we'll be ready for some construction. All right, so next stop over here at the drill press. And for me, a lot of the baits that I've always made, I like to put the line tie in the nose of the bait. Most of the baits that I'm always fishing with are shallow running baits, you know, five, six feet or less um, has been most of the crankbaits that I've ever made. If you're wanting to make a bait that's gonna run seven, eight, 10 foot, you're probably gonna want to put that line tie actually out in the bill because you're, for one, you're gonna be using a longer bill bait but to get that kind of depth, you're going to need to put the line tie out in the bill. That's a whole couple more steps to actually have to go through. Um, stuff we're not going to cover in this video, but, uh, but you do have to drill holes actually in the bill, run the line tie out there in it. And then it would go in underneath of the nose or underneath of the bill of the bait. But what we're going to do is going to go in right there on the top, um, top of the side of the bill. So we're, we've got the, a little tiny bit in here. I think it's a sixteenth of an inch. Um, that's what I drill my, my line tie and my tail wire with, and then we'll change that bit out to do the belly weight. So extremely important to get this dead center. I mean, that, especially on the nose one, the tail one, yeah, it matters, but the nose one, you want to make sure that you're getting that thing dead center. And I want to go just below that, that hard point right there, that hard edge. I want to go just below that is where I want to go in. And then having that little slot in that bill, I actually like for that line tie to run kind of through the back of that bill slot because that extra glue around the bill helps even secure that uh, that wire in there a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get that one done. Okay, so we've got those both drilled. I actually even missed the bill slot a little bit, but the glue I'll use is so thin, it'll run through that wood being as porous as it is and, uh, and make contact with that in there. But really important, I, I hit that one really good, right, you know, really, really close to center. And just take your time with that. There's no reason to get in a rush on this part because that's a place where it's easy to mess up um, on both of those. We'll go ahead and drill a couple more so we've got some more baits to do, but, uh, but yeah. Really important to, to take your time, make sure you hit the center part of that and try not to you know, blow out any of that wood right there. That one's not got much room to mess up there. All right, so we've switched out our drill bit to the belly weight um, size diameter bit. And we've got three different belly weights here. I think it's maybe a two, a three, and a five gram. And so I'm gonna drill three of these baits and I'm gonna put a weight in each one of them um, with the one being the lightest, two being the middle, obviously three being the heaviest one. I wanna drill that because this is kind of a test. This is an experiment to help you all see you know, what different amount of weights do to baits, the kind of weight that you wanna think, you know, of, of what you're trying to get out of your bait. Here's a big thing to keep in mind. This is just a plain block of wood. This doesn't have any sealer on it yet. This doesn't have any paint on it yet. This doesn't have a top coat on it yet. All that, it may not sound like a lot, but it actually adds a tremendous amount of weight to that bait. So it just depends on how fast of a rise that you want this thing to have. 
you know, basically everybody wants their crankbait at least to float some, you know, I mean, working with balsa, if you try to design one to suspend, some are going to sink, some are going to float and very few may actually suspend. So you always want to want to err on the side of that bait floating because you may get a more dense piece of wood that will actually cause that bait to suspend or possibly even sink if you're right on that verge of floating. So we're going to, we're going to want to have a finished product of what we're testing right here with just bare materials that's going to rise pretty decent. If it doesn't rise, you know, at a, at a fairly decent rate without any of those other top layers of paint and everything on it, once we're done, it's going to be a sinking bait. No question about it. Um, and so that's, that's what we're wanting to do. So we're wanting to, we're going to drill these out, um, and you know, start adding weight to them. Got a little cradle here, just like everything else, whether it's drill doing the, the bill slot, this is a very important place to be able to make sure that your weight goes in the same angle, the same spot every single time. You could definitely take this to the next step and have it to where this actually holds it on this drill press. I kind of always just eyeball it. I've got this set to where, you know, the bait backs up against that piece of wood. That's, it's pretty vertical um, in there. This is actually not truthfully the right bait for that cradle. So it's going to be off just a little bit of, of an angle. Um, but it's going to do the job for what we're trying to show here. But having a cradle like that is a, is a very important deal again, to be able to have some consistency in this handmade process. And you're going to want to, you're going to want to put that at the very lowest point of the belly. That's where I always go to start with. I may end up shifting it forwards or backwards. If I see that I feel like I need to, to change the diving angle. Um, but my ideal, my goal is to go in the very lowest point of the belly, which is the highest part of that heel right there. Um, when I'm starting to drill this. So, all right, this is number one. It's going to get the least amount of weight. So I want to, I want to go in there just enough to where the top of that weight will end up being flush with the belly of that bait. So we're going to drill this thing a little bit, just go a little bit at a time and, and try to fit that weight to it. Look over here on the side, try to make sure that I'm right in the dead center of this bait. I don't think, no, that's definitely not quite deep enough yet. See what we've got. Okay, so you see I'm still not quite deep enough yet. I need to go a little bit further. That's actually what that piece of blue tape is on that bit for. That's kind of my gauge for one of the one of the larger weights. That's a good way to do it. You can put a piece of tape on there and run it down to it each time. Okay. So that's the perfect depth right there. You can see that that weight is, you know, just it may be just a hair hair too deep that's okay i can always pull it back out just a little bit when i go to glue that in but you want it to be able to go flush you don't want to have a big hole you don't want it to sink down in there um, and you definitely don't want it you know sticking out any just barely sink that weight in there that's perfect that'll leave enough room for glue to uh to work its way in there okay so we're going to drill one a little bit deeper for that number two weight and considerably deeper for that number three weight and then we'll be able to test all these We'll put a tank up here and do them a float test. I hit number two right on the money first try. All right, let's see. Is weight number three? Will it even? It'll fit in the bait, but just barely. Did get that one off center just a little bit. Let's go a hair deeper too. Try to even that out just a touch. All right. Okay, that one fits in there good too. So now we need to take and uh and just knock that little bit of 
fuzz off around the edges of that with our sanding block just to kind of clean that up some and then we'll test all these out we're not even going to glue them in um, because i want to do all the gluing together we're just going to do this as a test run just to see where we're at on flotation and here, here's another big thing um, on on crankbait building just to, to make a really clean finished product i never paint my baits myself I've got a buddy of mine, Biggs, that got fish with a lot. He does all my painting for me. Um, to make a really clean bait, the best way to do it is to actually to put the weight in. And you, could, you can have cut your bill slots. You don't have to at this point. You can do your order of, of stuff a little bit different. But to make a really clean bait, you want to put the weight in. Don't do your line ties. Don't do your bill. Paint the bait. You seal it. You paint it. You do all that stuff, except your very final top coat. Okay, and then you go back, you put your wires in, you put your bill in, you do that, and then you put your final, your very, very final top coat on it. That makes for a really clean bait. If you do kind of follow this procedure I'm doing, it'll make a fish catching bait that'll catch just as many as anything else out there because I'm gonna have it completely assembled. Then to paint it, you would need to tape the bill off. Um, you'd wanna seal the bait and then you'd want to go through that painting process. So you're going to end up with a little bit of paint on the bill. Um, it does give you something to hold on to to work with. Man, it's not a wrong way to do it. It's just a little bit cleaner if you, you know, if you build the bait, put the weight in it, and then wait to cut your bill slot in um, until you're completely done. So just something to, uh, to think about there. All right, we've got them. We're going to put some weight. We're going to put these weights. Let's set them in them, and then we're going to bring this tub of water over here and see where we're at on buoyancy, buoyancy, buoyancy. Am I close on that? Buoyancy, somewhere in there. It's a B word that means how fast it rises. About 68, it's about what it feels like. Colder water is more dense and it floats, it'll float faster in colder water. Okay, that's enough water in there to see what we need to see. So what do y'all think? You think one, you think number three is going to sink? I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious as to if three is, is even going to float at all. And again, this is a, this is something that I'm doing as a test to help you all understand what goes in to the process of building a crankbait. This, you don't want to water test every bait. Once you've got, you know, you're working with this pattern with that size wood, You've, te you've done this part, you don't need to test every single one of them. You just need to know this is the weight that fits for this bait, you know, for, the, for what I'm trying to get it to do. So this isn't something that you would do every single time. This is just a step to say, okay, this was the right size weight for that bait, for what we're doing. All right, number three, heaviest weight. Um, my guess is it may, it may rise, it may not. I'm, I'm gonna say it sinks. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm going with. I'm gonna go that it sinks. I was very wrong. Okay, <laughs> that, that, really, that really blows me away. And it, it actually jumps back up quite fast, to be quite honest. Okay. So, I mean, it, it does. It's, man, it's got, a, it's got a pretty good rise to it. I got to say, I'm really, really blown away by that. Okay, that's number three. Well, they're obviously all of them are going to float, but these are just going to float just that much, you know, that much quicker, that much higher. Number two, barely. It, it'll barely even drop underneath of the water when you drop him. Drop him in there and it's immediately back up. So number one, the very lightest one, he'll be lucky if he gets wet. So yeah, number one even lays on its side. Number one won't even sit straight up and down um, in the water. Now that, that would be easy to look at and say, okay, number three is the obvious, the obvious choice. It does definitely still rise. By the time you get clear coat and all the other coats that it's gonna to take to get on there, you would truthfully, you'd be lucky for number three to still float, okay? You can tell that just the tail of the bait is all that's out of the water. Um, that's all you've got above, above the surface right there. Where number two, you've got, you know, you've got a decent portion of the bait that is above the water. All right, so number two, no doubt, is gonna still be a, be a floater um, when it's done with. Number one, uh, you know, it, it too, but number one is so, is so lightweight. For one, it's not going to cast very well. 
but it's also going to be hard to get number one to be a true running bait because it is so light. It's going to want to be more unstable. I would go with the weights I've got right now. I'm going to, I'm going to say number two is going to be the best one. Um, but number three, it, it would be a, definitely a little bit better casting bait, but you might could actually take number three because I want to say it's a five gram weight and number two is a three. A four would be about perfect for this. You could t take a little bit off of that weight that's in number three, and that would actually be the one that I would go with. So if I was doing this right now, I would pull this, uh, I'd pull these weights back out. I'd pull that weight that I'm using number three, and I would cut just a little bit off of that to make it still slightly heavier than what we've got right there with, uh, with number two. So you can see the difference in the size of that. I would, I would split that difference um, and that's what I would go with for this particular bait. Just given that water test um, rising like it does, that's kind of where I would end up being. So just to, just to give you a little example of how you, can, how you can figure that out. I think we're gonna wrap up there for this part, um, for part two of how to build a crankbait. We've went through on this one, you know, from the bill slot, cutting that in, all the drilling we're gonna do, and even doing a water test to see exactly where those baits are gonna end up being. They need to dry a little bit um, before I, I actually glue anything to them. And again, this was just a test. This isn't something you wanna do with every single bait you're gonna do. It's definitely best to keep that balsa wood dry, um, you know, until you get some sealer on it and stuff. But for the sake of this, I didn't mind messing up a few to, uh, to kind of show you that test. So come on back, check out part number three. We're gonna really put all the pieces of the puzzle together at that, and then we might as well go water test each one of these and see which one does best. <laughs>